It is good to see you all here in the sanctuary or at home, watching in whatever ways you are watching. We have several announcements today. I'm going to start with one that is not on the bulletin. LaPorte County Meals on Wheels is collecting shoes that they can give to individuals who need them. If you would like to bring shoes in, we will make sure that they get them. So Sunday mornings, during the week when the office is open, we will then dis distribute the shoes to, to them so they can share them. If you would like to have an Easter messy church bag, let us know. We have several left. The Spiritual Life Study, focusing on the book Sensible Shoes, A Spiritual Journey by Sharon Garlach-Brown, will begin on Wednesday, April 20th at 7 p.m. via Zoom, and then we will discuss other alternatives. The Zoom address will be available this week. Come and join us there, and we will then discuss options for meeting. You may order the book from Amazon, or you can just come for the discussion without the book. Um, I think Wednesday is the 21st. Is it? You're right. Wednesday the 21st? Okay, cool. Probably. There we go. <laughs> oh, There's wow. no excuse. I did this before I left on vacation. That, actually, that sounds like a pretty good excuse, Pastor, <laughs> if you did before <laughs> you left on vacation. If you need offering envelopes, you may pick them up on Sundays at the Welcome Center. Please sign for them so we know you have them. The soup kitchen continues to need donations of toilet paper that we may share with the guests. You, again, you may either bring it to the church or you can make a donation so that we can purchase some. We continue to host the soup kitchen five days a week. We can certainly use donations of time and money. We continue to serve outside to-go meals. Since many of our guests have not yet been or may not be vaccinated, we don't anticipate moving inside anytime soon. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I know we kind of messed up the beginning because we didn't do the announcements when we were supposed to, but hey, this was done before my vacation. Today is after my vacation. For those of you who are watching online, I am the United, I am the Reverend Nancy Nichols, and this is Michigan City First United Methodist Church. In the sanctuary this morning, we have our song leader, Joe, woohoo. We have Bev on the piano. We have Pam on the drums. Candace will be doing our special music. We have our wonderful, faithful tech crew of Billy, George, and Chris. And Ms. Trish is here to monitor the Facebook comments and to do our children's time. It is good to be here. This is the Easter season, the season of new life and a breath of the Spirit. As we enter this time of worship together, may we open our hearts to the renewal of our minds and our spirits. May we dare to let go and dance with a renewed vigor as we, allowed re as we allow resurrection hope to fill our bodies and souls. In this newness of life, we are learning a new song, Dare to Dance. I will sing the chorus through once and then invite you to join in. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their stories, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. Free the captives, heal the blind, leave the fear of oppression behind, walk on boldly, take a stand. 
This Sunday acknowledges that sometimes we are unsure about our steps in this world. For the disciples, even while in their joy at seeing Jesus after the resurrection, they were still disbelieving and wondering. We are reminded that even though we may not know our next steps, we can be sure they will come because we are God's beloved children. And so we have steps to follow, those of the resurrected Jesus. May we join together in the call to worship. This is the call. Face this new day even when you aren't sure. We, we lift, lift up, up our heads to meet the day. Get ready for life, for life is all around. We fortify, we fortify our, our hearts, hearts with compassion, compassion and, and action. action. For we are, we are called, called to, to dance, dance again. Our opening hymn this morning can be found in your hymnals, number 261, or lyrics on the monitors, Lord of the Dance. Again, number 261. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon in the stars and Let us pray. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, 
You set this world in motion and gave it life. Turn us to you when our steps are not sure. Come and dance with us, engage with us as we seek you so that we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. In just a moment, if you are in the sanctuary, you are invited to turn to the people around you and wave or exchange other safe movements as a sign of graceful greetings for this day. If you are at home watching on Facebook Live, you may exchange greetings in the comments. Also, please begin sharing your prayer concerns on Facebook Live. The peace of the risen Christ is with you. And also with you. And now we invite children of all ages to come and join Ms. Trish up front. We don't have any X's on the floor for you to sit on, Isaac, so you can sit anywhere. Isaac, who did you bring with you this morning? What's his name? Floppy? Sloppy. Sloppy? Like, like, because he's, oh, got it. Sloppy the sloth, everybody. So I'm glad you're here this morning, Isaac, because I need some help. And I'm going to stand over here so that I can make sure the kids that are watching at home can see, because they need to see our faces this morning. So this morning's Bible story sounds a little bit like last week's Bible story. And do you remember that the disciples were all gathered together and they were talking. Do you remember that? Can you show me, we're going to show everybody the face the disciples were probably making because they were scared. Show me a scared face. Remember, they were very scared and worried. And they were talking about Jesus. And then Jesus came and he joined them in the room, right? And this story. In today's Bible story, the disciples say something that sounds kind of funny. Do you know what they said? They said, it's a ghost. Can you believe that? They thought Jesus was a ghost because they had watched Jesus die on the cross, and they were just talking about it, and then all of a sudden Jesus was there in the room, and they went, it's a ghost. And then Jesus said, peace be with you. And the disciples went, oh, can you do that? Show me what it feels like when you feel peace. Jesus said, peace be with you. Mr. George is up there going like this. <laughs> peace. They felt peace. And then they felt, this is the word we're going to talk about today, joy. Why did the disciples feel joy, Isaac? Who was there with them? Jesus. If Jesus came and joined you in the room, would you feel joy? Show me joy. Woohoo! Okay. Not gonna interrupt you. Thank you. If you don't have masks on, you can show joy. Yeah. All right, let's say a quick prayer. Are you ready? Dear God of joy. Thank you for Easter. Amen. Amen. Just as the st Let me start again. Just as the stories the different gospel writers told about Jesus while he was living were a bit different. So are the stories they told about his post-resurrection appearances as well. Today's lesson, found in the 24th chapter of Luke, comes immediately after Jesus has appeared to two of his disciples on the road to Emmaus and made himself known in the breaking of the bread, who then went and told the others. Hear now these words, picking up at verse 36. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them 
and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of God. Thanks Thanks. be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. For those of you who are gathered in the sanctuary today, I suppose I should explain a little bit. Molly got married yesterday, and we decided to leave the petals on the floor. She had two of the cutest flower girls I have ever seen, Jim and Mary Ann's great-granddaughters, And they were in spinny dresses. And I don't think I've ever had a flower girl that ever tossed the flowers as precisely and exuberantly and with as great joy as they did. And then sitting up here in the very front with the flower girls here tossing flowers and Maverick the corgi and Tom the corgi wrangler over here with Jim tossing treats, it was a joy-filled wedding, as we would anticipate and hope for and long for Molly. So when we get to our prayer time, please pray for Molly and Josh and for their wedding. We didn't know for sure if we were going to have a wedding rehearsal. Because for those of you who follow me on Facebook, you know that I had a little bit of trouble getting home from my vacation. And so I, at one point, I said to Bev, how do you feel about running a rehearsal? <laughs> Obviously, I couldn't see her face. But I imagined that it went pale white <laughs> with panic. So here's why I wondered about the rehearsal. I got up at the crack of dawn. I awakened my sister, who is less of a morning person than I am, and she dropped me off at the airport in Hilton Head, South Carolina, at a quarter till six, which is a quarter till five our time. And I not so happily went through security and waited and waited and waited because the flight wasn't until 7.15, but they told me I had to get there that early. We got on the plane. It was lovely. Distanced perfection, even though it was an old plane. And they took off. It was a smooth takeoff and a smooth landing in Atlanta with just about an hour before we boarded on the next plane to come to the South Bend Airport. We got on the plane. This was not as delightful an experience. Every seat was filled. There was no distancing. 
We took off. And then we heard something. But because many of us had earphones in or I was reading, I didn't quite hear what the pilot said. All I knew is that all of a sudden, we were going back to Atlanta. And I couldn't even let Bev know at that point because we had no Wi-Fi on the plane. So it was an all plane. Since we didn't know what we had heard, we made things up. It was a mechanical problem. There was a maintenance issue. I thought I heard that there was wind shear, and so we, it was safer to go back. So we go back to Atlanta, not knowing quite what we had heard, and not knowing what to believe from all of the rumors that were going about the cabin. After we landed safely, the pilot came back on and told us what was really going on, why we had been returned to Atlanta. At about 30,000 feet, he spotted a crack in the windshield. There was a sense of confusion and a sense of relief. We didn't know if they were going to bring in another plane to take us to South Bend, or if we were going to have to try to make our own connections, the communication was not there. Confusion, relief, and at least for me, a sense of joy once I knew what had been going on, that my feet were firmly planted on the ground. Confusion, relief, and joy. Today's post-resurrection sighting of Jesus comes from the book of Luke. Luke doesn't emphasize the locked doors like the Gospel of John does, but there is a sense of confusion and a faint tinge of hope sneaking in around the corners. They have gotten together in that room. Maybe it was the upper room. Maybe it was a different room. We don't know. Where they had gathered, not knowing what to do. Much as throughout this pandemic, many of us have gathered, not knowing what to do. When we've lost loved ones and we can't have a service or when we watch the continued pandemic of violence and hatred pour out upon our land. They were pooling their experiences, those believers, what they had heard, what they had seen, what they thought they knew. Their hearts were pounding. Their eyes were bugging out. They didn't dare hope. Maybe they were making up their own scenarios. And then he was there. No one saw him come in. No one met him at the door. No one grabbed a towel and offered to wash his feet. No one offered him a cup of water or a loaf of bread. But he was there, in their midst, and he said these amazing words, peace be with you. I suspect that they wondered if they would ever know peace again, because they thought he was a ghost. They were haunted by him, by the idea of him, by their memories of what had happened to him. And they were ashamed. They were ashamed that their fear and their terror 
had gotten the best of them. How they had abandoned him. How they had denied him. And even though the women had said, we have seen him, what he said is true. They couldn't believe what they didn't know. Well, Jesus knew them pretty well. After all, he'd been hanging out with them for a while. And he says, watch me eat this piece of fish. If I was a ghost or a figment of your imagination or a delusion brought on because you haven't slept and, and you've been afraid, if I was a ghost, I wouldn't eat this. I am as real as you are. I am here. I am who I said I am. And that's where the text ends. Now in the Gospel of Luke, the story doesn't end at the end of the Gospel because even though they're not touching in our Bibles, Acts, written by the same person, continues the story. So we know that there's more to come. We leave it here with the reality of the resurrected Jesus and the promise that life, the life we know, the life we experience, the life we long for, the life we hope for, is stronger than death. It doesn't avoid death because Jesus didn't avoid death. It goes beyond. And the implications are as staggering to us as it was to those who cowered just a few moments before. If you haven't read Acts for a while, go ahead and read it and begin figuring out what it means to have a Savior who is risen from the dead, who puts aside the fear and the trembling and the terror, and who comes to you and says, peace be with you. This text, the text that we just heard, the text that ends with these words, you are witnesses of these things. That text is where we ground our faith. Touch and see, eat, and smell, feel, and hope. The life of faith has to be grounded in that kind of reality. If we don't start here, if we don't have some sense of the reality that Jesus is who he said he was, then we won't see. And if we don't see Jesus here and now, meeting the needs of the people that he knew and loved, if we don't see that Jesus, then we turn our faith only into a kind of pie in the sky when we die. We make it about life in the hereafter and not life in the here and now. We think that the only thing Jesus cares about, the resurrected one cares about, is checking off the number of people who go through St. Peter's Gate. And we've spiritualized heaven into being somewhere else. 
But the Gospel of Luke and the stories in Acts remind us that we have work to do. We are called to feed the hungry breakfast, not in heaven, but here. We are called to introduce and to address issues of injustice here and now because Jesus cared about the people in the here and now and not only in the hereafter and then. If we follow the Jesus of the Gospel of Luke, into lives of action and hope, then we advocate for those who need us to advocate for them. We work on justice in our own communities and in the world. There's a team of people right now who used to, on Monday mornings, go down to the beach and clean up the beach after the weekend. Since the beginning of April, this group has expanded and they are cleaning up Michigan City. And they have taken bags and bags and bags and bags of trash out of woods and streets and corners of buildings. And they are addressing the injustice of a world that litters by cleaning it. Our streets are so much more beautiful. A group of clergy in Chicago prayed in front of one of the hospitals, I think, and prayed for the peace of their city group of individuals from many religious perspectives met in Indianapolis. And they didn't just pray, but they addressed the violence of their community. What is God calling you to do? How will you live lives of action and hope because the resurrected one is in our midst. Thanks be to God. Today's special music that Candace brings to us reminds us that we are called to live out our joy even as we learn the next steps of our journey.
And thank you, Candace. Jesus called his disciples witnesses to the possibility of resurrection. The world is in need of continued resurrection to new life. We are called to be witnesses to this journey to newness by offering our resources and our energy to the work of justice and love through our offering today. Through your lives and actions, give to the world in such ways that your faith is honored. You may give your offering by sending it through the mail, donating through our online portal on the church website, bring it when we have outdoor communion, or put it in the memorial box at the back of the sanctuary. We will resume our art outdoor communion today at 11 o'clock, not at 1045, because we need a little bit more time to get ready. So 11 o'clock. Can we share our joys and our concerns this day? Let's continue to keep the Hickson family in our prayers. I think it was really hard not having Vern here yesterday, although Molly had asked if his name could go back up on the funeral banner so that in so many ways he was present. I have a praise today. My eldest sister that lives in Texas is 75 today. Happy birthday to you, Kane. Anything else? Um, I have a praise this morning. Um, oh, well, actually, I have a praise and a concern. My concern, she doesn't know I'm going to say this, but I know, of course, it is never too early to, think, to start thinking about who's your star. And, of course, our own dear Candace, who we just heard do a solo, is a finalist this year. So, let's be... Well, here's a round of applause. And also, again, spread the word. Do not forget to get ready for September so we can all come and support her as she becomes the 2021 Who's Your Star winner. Um, Absolutely. I also... So that is... Actually, I guess that's more of a praise than concern. I have another um, praise, and that is that it has been... For the past... Uh, several months, um, particularly at Galveston Steakhouse, where I am fortunate to be gainfully employed, um, there have just been blessings upon blessings showered on me. The business is good. Everybody is, by and large, pretty safe there. The, the ownership is very interested in making sure that her staff and her patrons are safe. Um, and, without tearing up, I am especially grateful to be at Galveston because it was through Galveston um, that I got to know many people of your church, and not to put them on the spot, I had every suspicion that this was a church of good people because I knew that the Vanderwagons were such good people, and because they were so unfailingly kind to me at the restaurant, I had a suspicion that the rest of you, in fact, were in the same mold. So <laughs> thank you. I am so glad to be here. And also, I am thanking God that I am I continue to be gainfully employed at the restaurant because it's, it's really nice to have a job. Well, I can say for us, although you were here before I was, we're glad they were really nice people and so were the rest of you so that you could be part of us. Do we have any other prayer requests? Let us pray. Oh, holy God, may we be filled with joy joy in your resurrection, even if we don't understand it. Perhaps the proof is in the pudding, and we can find your ever-living and lasting love in the actions of your children. May we be the kind of disciples that you call us to be where we are not afraid to stand up to proclaim your love and your acceptance of all of your children. Your world continues to be torn apart by this virus. For a while, we may feel that we are safe, there are so many places in your world that await basic 
safety hygiene and the idea of receiving the vaccine is a dream. As we share our thankfulness, may we also be reminded of our privilege. And we pray for those whose lives have been torn apart by violence, especially the people of Indianapolis and the Sikh community who feel that they may have been targeted. We pray for each of our young people in this church that they may know that they are cherished and loved and accepted, that they are supported as they seek to be the people that they are and the adults that they are becoming. May we celebrate them and be filled with love for them. We pray for Molly and Josh as they start this day as a married couple. May the joy of their memories of their wedding sustain them as they walk the path of married life. All this we pray in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us us this this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. us. And lead lead us us not into into temptation, temptation, but but deliver deliver us from from evil. evil. For For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our song for stepping out this morning can be found in your uh, Faith We Sing books, number 2130, or lyrics on the monitor. We'll be singing the summons, 2130. Remember, it's not a dirge, it's a dance.
should be proud of yourselves because you did not only two, one, but two five-verse hymns this morning. <laughs> so, good work. We're making up for the last year. <laughs> we want to thank you for being here with us on this day because you are, because, oh, I'm sorry. We want to thank you for being here on this day, however you are here. I invite you to come back next week because Easter is not just a day, it is a season, a week of weeks, meaning that we will be daring to dance for the next seven weeks until the day of Pentecost. And between now and next week, I hope you'll dance. We have heard the risen Jesus speak peace and offer us hope through his very body. We have danced with dreamers past and present, Send us forth now, O God, to live in the freedom of the peace that you still speak to us, making our steps more sure each and every day. And now may the loving God, risen Christ, and dancing spirit fill you with all you need for the days ahead. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.